Well, our next pro my next project is a 1961 Austin Healey Bug Eye Sprite. It's actually the Mach 1, the first model that they came out with. And uh, it's a fairly simple car in that it doesn't have roll-up windows or anything in the doors. And of course all of this needs to be repaired and replaced and all that good stuff. The engine looks really good. It looks like someone has already been into it once. Of course we'll tear it all apart check it all out, put new gaskets and bearings and rings in it, and uh, and put it all back together again. Yeah, the windshield's in really good shape. It looks like it's the original wind, sh wind glass. Uh, I will buy uh, some new um, molding for it, of course, and uh, polish out the aluminum frame on it. I'll probably have another 2,000 in it, depending upon the motor. If the motor's in good shape, uh, you know, it, not that much. If I have to do a total rebuild on the engine, we're another thousand on that. So it could be between two and three thousand to finish the car. I got I bought it off of eBay for twenty-one hundred dollars. I think I got a good deal on it, although it is going to require a lot of sheet metal fabrication. But fortunately for these cars, uh, they are very, very popular, and there's a lot of uh, manufacturers that still make parts for these cars. The body will be the last thing we restore due to the winter. We'll probably start on some of the mechanicals like the engine and transmission and then start working on suspension parts. So when the body is complete, maybe by the end of summer, we'll be able to start putting it back together. I've decided to go ahead and start on the mechanicals first. And the first task today was to take the transmission apart and see how much, how much that's going to cost to rebuild. painted the back end of the transmission. Original uh, uh, Austin Healy green, but you got to have the aluminum show through. Even though after this is put in the car, the only people seeing this is someone jumping underneath it, but uh, it's going to look really nice when I'm done. It's going to look professional. Yeah, if you if uh, if you're not confident to do it yourself, you can have you can buy these transmissions already rebuilt. But I want to say they're around a thousand dollars. So by doing this all myself, I'll be in this thing maybe maybe a hundred parts at hundred dollars in parts at most, and a few hours of my time. But uh, it never hurts to try to tackle it on your own. The worst that can happen is you got to go buy another transmission. The lay gear assembly, which is the most expensive part of the transmission, is in very good shape. And uh, I have no doubt I'll be able to reuse it. That's a savings of a few hundred dollars just for that. The, uh, the other shafts look, look like they're in very good shape. Shifting forks uh, don't look like they have much wear. So obviously someone has been in it, replaced some parts down the road, and uh, I'm the beneficiary of that, which is quite nice. The, uh, the help of Super Purple uh, parts cleaner actually helps degrease the parts and then you hose them off and then of course wire brush the uh, case with the uh, brass wire brush wheel to uh, remove any, other, the, any of the other paint and to make it look original without painting it a silver. Now there's manuals that you can get online and it did help me in uh, just the sequence of the gears putting it back together and it all came back. Um, I did test fit quite a few times just to make sure everything fit well. And this, this transmission is completely redone now. Um, it no doubt will last years and years and years. Everything is a nice tight fit. There's no loose components. Nothing's worn out. Obviously somebody has rebuilt this in previous time, uh, which uh, of course I benefit from because I didn't have to replace everything in the transmission. So. These levers are, this is third and fourth gear and first and second gear. 
So you move that in. That's fourth gear right now. See, it's pretty much one to one. Boise stay. <laughs> oh, there are some components I still need to buy to, to finish the external part of the transmission. I need to buy the slave cylinder and, uh, of course, uh, redo the, the uh, stick shift that goes into the top half here. Starting next, we'll start taking some of the components of the engine apart and fixing them. Uh, try to get all the mechanicals done, hopefully by the end of January, and then work on some suspension parts so that when uh, spring comes by, we can start working on some sheet metal on the body. After searching the internet for powder coating equipment, the least expensive with the best views was still the Harbor Freight Tools powder coating system and I uh, got it on sale was $59. Then the next thing was I had to find an oven and someone discarded this old RV oven uh, out of an RV and uh, it works perfect for this application. It's got a big enough uh, cavity in there that I can do some fairly sizable parts. But uh, it takes just a few moments as long as the parts are really clean. The powder coating operation is very simple to use. Uh, adequate ventilation when you start baking it because it does have a little bit of a smell to it. And we do have some ventilation in here at the top of the garage door. The engine. Uh, glad to say that it has never been tampered with before or rebuilt. It's all uh, standard bearings and pistons. So uh, this, at this point right now, we'll send it down to a machine shop and get it hot tanked and uh, measured, bore, measure the bore and see how much wear. It looks like we'll probably have to bore it out and turn the crank especially. The crank's got a little bit of wear in it. Camshaft looks good. No, we won't need to do that. Of course, I've already started making my parts list on uh, new parts that we need to uh, put the motor back together. Overall, I think with the machining, we'll probably be back in this motor about 700 bucks when we get it all done. The head has been redone once, and of course we'll send that to the shop too to make sure it's got the new style hardened valves and seats for the unleaded fuel that we run in the cars today. But this is a keeper, and uh, normally with all the cars I have, this car will probably never see more than a couple thousand miles a year, so this will probably be the first and last time we'll ever need to rebuild this motor. After a week or so of uh, not doing much, I was able to come down today and use the company's sandblast booth to sandblast a bunch of the front suspension parts. In order to get good adhesion on the powder coating, it's necessary to blast the surface to give the, the powder coating something to adhere to. And so that's why we blasted the parts, plus to remove most of the surface rust that was on the parts. This car came from Honolulu, Hawaii, and obviously was out in a lot of rain. Uh, the parts looked really good. There's no rusted holes and no structure was compromised on most of the parts. So. I thought they were the same size. Guess what doesn't get powder coated right now? <laughs> so tonight we finished the erect and pinion steering gear. Uh, after I took it apart, everything seemed to fit real well. There's no play in the uh, rack or the pinion gear. Most of it was in really nice condition. I did. Uh, I did look at the inner tie rods, 
there's no play, so I decided not to try to break them loose. I did replace the uh, outer tie rods with some new tie rods, and uh, the boots, of course, are all new. Cleaned and powder coated, and we're ready to reassemble. We reassembled, and uh, everything fits really well. So the steering column is now done, and we move on to some other good things like the lower control arm bushings. Today we were able to finish the uh, SU carburetors. These are not original to this car. These uh, came off of a 1275 engine simply because of the, the, the number of the serial number on the carburetors. But they're still the same and uh, uh, we'll see how they run. We may have to change the needle in there if it's too rich when we start running the engine. It took about three and a half hours to polish the carburetors up and clean them. Uh, got new kits, got new uh, needles in the bottom and uh, I've got some new oil to go in the tops for the dampers but uh, we'll wait till we get them installed on the engine. Right now everything looks good and I can't wait to get the motors assembled so we can put these carburetors back on. So today we finished assembling the rear axle housing and uh, we took it all apart. sent it down for powder coating, got it powder coated, and was able to powder coat the small parts ourselves. Put all new seals in it. After uh, thoroughly inspecting it, it didn't need any new ring and pinion gears. I did put a new pinion seal in it, new axle half seals. And then, of course, just cleaned everything up. So we're good to go. It looks like new. It'll, it'll be looking this good for years to come. After a few months of getting the machine, the machine shop to return the engine block, we were able to reassemble the engine and paint it. And uh, I like to not paint the bolts, make it look uh, maybe a little more professional with not painting everything like it was painted in the car. So uh, everything is finished, uh, married the transmission with the engine. Uh, I'm really happy with the way everything's turned out so far. Looks like new. One of the uh, difficult parts about the motor was the oil pump and uh, the, the new style oil pump is a little larger and I had to uh, hog out some of the retainer cup on the back mounting plate so that it all fit together and uh, just grind a little bit on the oil pump. After we got all that done it fit pretty well, no problems with that. Uh, all the bolts I had so I just had to clean them up. and. Lastly, to do it, I need to uh, polish out the valve cover. I've elected to keep the uh, cast aluminum valve cover that came with the motor and the car. And so with that, I'll buff that out and polish it to a mirror shine. And I've got the uh, air cleaners, the original air cleaners have all been powder coated. They look fantastic. 
so that'll that'll show very well. I haven't got them installed on the engine only because I don't want them to get dinged up as I move the engine around the shop. Still some parts to buy on the engine, of course. Uh, the water pump is missing, and uh, I just haven't purchased it yet just because I wanted to buy buy some other parts before uh, before that. Yeah, now that it's elevated where I think I'd like to have it, I'm going to go ahead and build the rotisserie. And uh, the rotisserie will just be maybe some glorified engine stands bolted together so that I can rotate the body and uh, replace the panels. To finally finish these, I was able to buy the bushings from a company back east called Apple Hydraulics who makes these bushings for the lower A-arm assemblies for the uh, Spridget or Midget Sprite. Uh, I think he charged me like $35 a set. Uh, again, you could send these out and get them rebuilt, but that's no fun. I wanted to rebuild them myself, and since they were in good condition, maybe some pitted by rust, I decided to go ahead and finish them. So I, I heated them up and broke the silver solder, and you can see these are some of the old bushings that came out of it. There's a right and a left. And uh, with the instructions to use an old fulcrum pin to hold them in place while you solder, they worked out very well. I was able to solder them back, almost like factory, and, uh, and then I powder coated the whole unit so that it's got a durable coat. So uh, today we began to uh, start to remove some of the old floor pan in the car so we can get to some of the support structure and then uh, rebuild with what needs to be rebuilt so we can uh, replace with the new sheet metal that we've already purchased. Once we get that done, I'll, I'll put a new, uh, the floor sections now come in two-piece sections, so I'll start with the driver's side. And you know, hopefully in the next month or two, I'll get that driver's side all rebuilt. Uh, as weather permits, we're starting uh, into almost a year on this project. And we've got a lot of the stuff rebuilt, but the bodywork is the last to do. So. So I went down at, at Harbor Freight Tools and they have an actual bit that is used to cut out spot welds. And uh, for $4.95 it was a fantastic investment, did a great job rather than just using a drill bit. Real pleased with that. And I bought an extra one so when that one wears out. And we uh, got into the one structure, the one cross member that is used to jack up the car. There's a little bit of rot and I'm going to replace some of the parts of it but I won't be replacing the whole unit. So after a long period of time we did finally get the bushings installed in properly, seated right, uh, did screw up a couple of bushings along the way and had to order some new ones. Thankfully they do sell them individually. Uh, I went ahead and uh, read online there are reaming tools available to line bore the spindle bushings but nobody has them in stock and I just didn't feel the need to spend a few hundred dollars for one. So. I, I also read there where people have used old spindles uh, or spindle axles uh, um, and grooved them and made their own reading tool. So that's what this is right here. It's part of a <coughs> an old spindle that came with it and I just grooved it with a wheel and used that to ream the big end here and then I used a portion of this section of another one grooved it and I used that to ream this end right here and then just just to line them both up I went ahead and put it in the drill press and re-reamed the large one with the pilot from this first one up here and it seemed to have done a really nice job. When you go ahead and assemble the units, there is absolutely no play.
are some of the old rusted uh, panels, side panels from the car. I was able to cut it off the other day and then uh, trim off a lot of the other old the panels and start rebuilding some patch panels so that the new panels will fit. Of course, they still need a lot more welding to be done and cleaned up, but these panels will, uh, these panels will hold the new panels in place and uh, allow for proper alignment of the flooring, which is a, an important part. I've left this all in touch because it, it wasn't needed to remove that to take care of this first. And I didn't want to remove too much of the body panels and too much of the structure because I do have it hanging on my homemade rotisserie. So when, again, once all that's done, we'll be removing this panel and the A pillar and rebuilding that. And then we'll move over here to the back panel here and do this rust repair. faster than this, but there's about 120, 130 spot welds to uh, weld, and uh, but it's fitting in really good, really nice with uh, what's going on right now, seems to have all fit well, and uh, with any luck, in the next day or so, I'll have the rest of this all welded in so I can start to attack, again, the A-pillar. We're on the second half of the car right now on the passenger side and I, what I'm doing now is just cleaning up all of the flanges and they're going to of course have to rebuild a lot of these flanges that will accept the new sheet metal that will go on. A lot of the stuff is just too rusted and I'm chasing it back to a good spot where I can clean it up and re-weld it. Any surface rust will be cleaned off and then it will be neutralized with a rust neutralizer before we go ahead and reassemble it so that it doesn't show up again. I'm using a hole punch from Harbor Freights. So we used a method, there, there's two ways to put this together of course. One is 
to go in and do like the factory does, which is spot welding. And, and of course, you've got to have some special spot welders to reach in this deep and get these plugs. Uh, I do not have that. So we went ahead and uh, punched all of these holes in and did what's called plug welding and welded through this metal to the base metal. And uh, it, it's a really nice, tight weld. Looks good. I will dress these welds up across the top and get any high peaks off. So for the first time in about three months, uh, it's, now we're able to come out and work on the car. It's been a long, hard winter here in Idaho, and, and so I was able to uh, bring out my sandblast yesterday and blast most of the engine compartment and get rid of the loose uh, debris. And uh, this morning we were able to uh, shoot a, a direct-to-metal direct primer sealer to seal up all of the bare metal. It's our hopes that uh, here real soon, uh, in the next couple of weeks, we'll be able to paint the bottom of the car so I can put the uh, suspension on it so we can roll it in and out of the garage and get it off the uh, rotisserie. There's still little areas that I need to clean up, and so I've stopped primering today because I found other areas that uh, I need to either grind some welds down or uh, uh, clean up some more debris on the back side of the car. We'll proceed with that uh, next week. Following a couple weeks of that, we went ahead and seam sealed all of the seams underneath the body and uh, painted it in two different stages. We did the first, first part of the body, uh, which was the easiest part underneath the rear axle and the floor pans. And then a week later, went ahead and painted the engine compartment, which took twice as long as any other part of the car, only because of all of the little nooks and crannies for the paint to get in. But it came out really nice, really happy with the color. Again, the original color was red, and we decided to go with Old English white. Uh, we haven't picked the interior color yet. Now we've got we've come to uh, the assembly of the uh, front end, and this is reversed, by the way. <laughs> I've got to change that around. Anyway, <laughs> so we're putting the front end suspension on and hoping to finish that uh, possibly today. Um, I've got all the components and new uh, bearings and all of that to put it all together, and I've got some older wheels that we're going to put on it so we can roll it in and out of the garage or in and out of the, the carport so we can start working on the body shell. And uh, the rear axle is ready to go. Probably another couple of days or a week and I'll have it rolling in and out of the garage. Got some 
friends watching us rebuild the car. And they keep growing and growing. And we're going to let them live as long as they don't sting me. But the minute I get stung, they all die. After getting the wishbones and everything installed on it in the, sp in the springs, uh, I was able to go ahead and uh, reinstall the rack and pinion, which I rebuilt about a year and a half ago with new bushings and, and uh, new bellows assemblies. Now that we've got the car in the garage, it's uh, all about fitting the doors and getting the gaps correct. Uh, after replacing the A-pillars and all of the outer skins on the A-pillars, we still have some, some fitting issues with the doors, although the doors are lined up pretty good now. I'm now going to start working on the gaps. Um, these pieces, because they're used on MG Midgets and other, other uh, variations of this car, they just they don't have the curvature in the door. so. We'll have to do some sheet metal work on here to fill that gap up and then still body work this. This of course is where the windscreen attaches. And this door needs some body work done as well. But got the doors fitting fairly good for a start. I'll put the latches on so that they don't move around on me as we start doing the body work on the car. is I built the door up because I needed to get the spacing better so I welded it and then I ground it flat. To get the door gaps better I had to slice the, the bodywork here and move that in to get that better. And then over here, same thing here, I had to slice this eight pillar and re-weld it up to get a better door gap in there and more even here. And then had to build the bottom of the door to get a more even gap along the bottom. Originally there was a dent here and I used a, a dent puller to pull most of that out. There's some holes left from the previous bodywork that will solder shut. And then we uh, ground off the beading on the top of the fender here, I'm not going to be replacing it. And I leaded all of that in over here to make it better. things we're doing today is we're taking the uh, the air box off or the front box this also locates the hood in a th in the front of the car and uh, the latching mechanism goes down below here you, as you can see this thing is completely rotted out but take it all apart uh, break all of the spot welds and then do flat pattern layouts and I'll send it to uh, Jack's Metal Works in Boise where he'll plasma cut the pieces and, uh, and then I'll, I'll bend them here at home. Once I get this finished, I'll start uh, repairing some of the lower apron on the hood itself. So we just finished the, uh, the layout of the old air box. As you can see, it was not much there. And we tried to decipher as much as we could the components. We drew it up and assembled it on SolidWorks. So that's what the air box will look like when it's complete. And then also we detailed each individual flat pattern. The nice thing is, is that it's all symmetrical, so this piece is the same as the left and the right, same as these and the bra brackets here, so I was only able to have to lay them out once. So 
So I've assembled a lot of the new air box. Um, I'm at a point right now though I needed to get a couple more pieces for the top, top rail and I'm waiting for some pieces to come in from England uh, for the bottom of the bonnet. Finally finished the caliper brakes and, and uh, put new seals and everything in it, cleaned them up. They look very nice. They work well. I had to do a few adjustments with some of the pieces because, of course, they're retrofit for a few different units. And then today, installed the uh, disc, new disc calipers and disc rotor on the driver's side. Still have a few more things to do. I haven't buttoned up the cotter key on the top fulcrum pin and the bumper. And I've got new brake lines that I need to run for everything. That'll happen here real shortly. While the winter sets in, this is nice just to work in the garage and do things that normally you couldn't do or wouldn't do during the summertime when you can do body work. Okay, it took me a while, but we installed the new brake lines, and of course when they come to you, they come in a spool and you have to unravel them and, uh, and then bend them, and I had nothing to go by, so I had no clue other than some pictures on the internet of the way the brake lines ran. So I was able to run them all, and, and they all seemed to fit pretty well, pretty uh, proud about that. I have bent the new one for the master. I haven't installed it yet because I'm waiting for the clutch line and the gaskets to come in and then I'll be putting the pedals in after I paint the foot wells. Uh, but the master cylinder, you can come over here, the master brake is, is now working. So after we uh, took the motor off of the cradle that has been sitting for about three years, the transmission didn't look like I wanted it to. So decided to, to uh, just, because it was already clean, just had some dust from the last couple of years, went ahead and taped around it and painted it with uh, uh, aluminum engine paint just to dress it up a little bit. So the underneath side of the car will look like the top side when it's all complete. The engines in these install incredibly easy. I think it probably took us a whole five minutes to put the engine in and get the uh, lines, uh, the bolts lined up for the rear transmission mount. And uh, I'll be, later be putting in the drive line, getting that all connected, and uh, put the tires back on it once I get the uh, the tie rods um, reamed out so that it'll fit the bug eye sprite tie rods. I'll be uh, able to roll this in and out of the garage. So to begin the uh, assembly of the interior of the car, we went ahead and painted the uh, foot wells and the bases of the 
uh, for the seat so that I could put in the steering column and the emergency brake lever and get that installed. After the assembly of the front end, it turned out that the tie rod ends that uh, came with the car were for a later model MG Midget and didn't uh, accept the older style tie rod ends, which were actually a larger tie rod end. The, the decision was either to buy new tie rod ends or revamp the ones that I had. And being that they were just needing to be reamed out, I went ahead and bought a reamer and reamed them out for the original tie rod ends that fit the uh, steering gear and, and everything else. Worked out great and they fit fine and happy with the results. was able to install the generator on the engine. That has been rebuilt about two years ago. The new water pump, the fan, of course, the exhaust pipe I had bent at Ammerman's in Boise to match the old one, so that one is, fits really well and reinstall the carburetors. <laughs> With all the new hydraulic lines and everything assembled, we were able to go ahead and bleed the clutch and the cylinders for the uh, brake system today. They've come out with a new brake fluid, it's the DOT5, and it's a silicone based fluid. This is uh, obviously much different than the original brake fluids of the cars where any brake fluid on a painted surface would remove it or destroy the paint if it wasn't wiped up uh, quickly. So we've converted this old system to the new DOT5. Seems to work really well. Of course time will tell, but uh, I, I'm really excited about this new, this new fluid that it doesn't destroy any painted surfaces. Because obviously when you bleed a new system, you get fluid over everything. Obviously it was really difficult to get in and tighten up the uh, uh, lines on this because they are recessed. So I modified a, an inexpensive 9 16 uh, box end wrench to be able to reach down inside there and grab those and twist them tight. Uh, I know that you can buy these, although uh, one was not readily available to me today, so I just modified an existing wrench to get it tight enough so it doesn't leak. On the final phases of the car now, we're skim coating the body and trying to straighten it so that there's no little ripples in it. Uh, this panel here 
had some big dents in it. It looked like maybe they threw the spare tire in there a couple of times or allowed it to bounce and there was some real heavy bumps on this back panel. Spent the last day skim coating it and sanding it and my arms are dead so it'll go on another day. Spent about 20 hours doing the body work, filling all of the little imperfections in the body and the weld joints where we welded the new panels on. Everything went pretty well. Of course, I'm not a professional, so it took me a little longer than normal. But uh, we were able to today to uh, go ahead and paint the back half of the car. And before you give me criticism on not painting the doors and the hood, uh, one of the important things for me was I didn't want the doors to come in contact with other things in the garage. so. I've left those for another time. And the hood still needs a considerable amount of work. Um, so I'll be doing that later this summer. So then we uh, began to uh, install the fuel tank bought a new fuel tank online. Uh, obviously, it, this particular tank came from Canada and uh, it installed wonderfully. It, it just matched up perfectly with the body and uh, all the new uh, gaskets and, and nuts and everything that came with it and a uh, new sending unit. Uh, then I began to work on the wiring harness. I pulled the old wiring harness out that came with a car. Uh, it was in uh, fairly good conditions. You can get new uh, ends and, and connecting pieces uh, from some of the online retailers like uh, Moss Motors. And so for about 20 bucks, I'm able to rebuild the whole wire harness with new ends, new connectors, and uh, it, it'll be just as good as a new, new wire harness in the end. So we pulled the windshield out and it was in pretty rough condition. Most of the aluminum was pitted. So we had to uh, wet sand a lot of the pits out as much as we could and then buff the aluminum and uh, remove some of the paint as people had uh, applied earlier. Uh, tried to install the windshield myself. It wasn't going the way I wanted it to and since I don't have good history with installing windshields. So I decided to uh, take it to a professional and for 30 bucks. Superior Paint and Glass in Caldwell installed it for me into the frame, and then uh, we installed it on the on the top of the car, and it's just looking wonderful now. The car actually looks like a car. And when, uh, moving forward, we'll be continuing with the wire harness and putting in the blower motor and the heater and the battery, and hopefully get this thing running in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, the dash had a lot of extra holes, and of course it had a big area in the back here for a radio and I wanted to get that done and I think this the dash came from a Mark II Sprite so it had some extra holes. We welded those up and then uh, um, sealed them up and plugged them up with um, uh, filler so now it's nice and flat. The date and all of the gauges are fairly correct.
the dash, instead of having it covered with the leather, we're going to go ahead and have it painted the color of the car. I think that just adds more richness to the car. And uh, once that's done and all the gauges get in place, then we'll be able to put it in, in place and, and start finishing up the cockpit. Exciting day today! Finally, after a four-year, almost a four-year project, the uh, Bug Eye Sprite came to life. As you notice, we didn't put any um, coolant or anything in the in the radiator, just plain water. We have to drain it anyway because the uh, the gauge that I hooked up actually goes into the dash. I mounted it outside so we could read all the the vitals, like the oil pressure. Did you see the oil pressure? Yeah. We're good, baby. You can hear the exhaust leak from that donut down there. I've got to fix that, tighten that up. Yeah, I told him that leak. Other than that, started right up. First, first, first crank. <laughs> you gotta love that, right? I don't know how many years prior to my ownership it didn't run, but engine sounds very good. I do need to adjust some of the carburetors, and obviously the right carburetor is uh, flowing a little more than the left, so I'll have to adjust those and get them going. Um, hooked up the muffler, do have an exhaust leak, so I need to figure that out um, and get that repaired or, or sealed up. And we've got a small little water leak on the on the housing, but other than that, it sounds really good. Yeah, I haven't installed the doors in the car yet, mainly because we're doing the interior work and opening those doors in a crowded garage like I have right now, they're going to be subject to ding, so I've left those off. Uh, I still need to wet sand them and buff them out to match the rest of the paint job, but that'll happen here real soon. I'm going to start making the, the kick panels and everything for the inside of the interior and finish the interior this winter uh, and then start working on the hood. Yeah, got the carpet kit from the bug guy guy because he says his carpet kits fit better than most and they did fit very well. I had no issues with the carpet kit. Did had to trim some of the areas and fasten some down. The big thing now is to get the seat frames uh, sandblasted and put the uh, uh, bars underneath them and get them mounted in the car and then start working on the seats. Steering wheel. It's for the 
test drive. sounded exactly like I expected it to. It went really, really well. Of course, it'd be better if I had a seat to sit on some back support. Other than that, it sounded fantastic. Transmission shifts really well. Uh, note out of the exhaust pipe sounds excellent. So, yeah, quite happy with a little test drive. That's the first time this car has actually driven on its own since, since I don't know when. Uh, the tires date back to 2002, so I imagine that's 16 years that this car hasn't been driven or maybe plus that Using the standard rims from the car as they were received and I took the rims down to a local powder coating company called uh, uh, Hubcap Annie's located in Boise and they were able to sandblast them and powder coat them the original silver They turned out wonderful and then I, uh, trying to find tires for this car is pretty difficult Nobody uses 13 inch tires anymore but the internet is loaded with vendors from 13 inch tires so these particular tires are a 155 80 13 uh, radial tire and I was able to pick them up on eBay at a really good rate and then of course uh, my oldest son is also a mechanic and he took them to work and was able to mount them for me so I saved quite a bit of money doing that the tires came out wonderful uh, one of the other things we're working on right now is we've got to start rebuilding the hood that came with the car and uh, when we sandblasted a couple years ago, these, the beading was all taken off the car and I thought that someone had just put all metal filler in here, but they actually the guy who did this did a really nice job. He actually welded the seams, uh, brazed them, and then he filled it all in with lead. I thought that was a, an all metal filler, but actually when I started to use a torch on it, the lead started to go away and this has all been leaded. Of course, uh, the the, uh, the contour of the front is completely not correct, and we're going to have to refilm. I mean, uh, reform these panels um, to save quite a bit of money. Um, there's no hoods available right now at a decent rate, and and all the hoods I've seen are in worse condition than this one. So we'll be rebuilding this one, uh, like we started a, a year or so ago. This chrome work, of course, was all painted black, and that's the way it looked little bit before and then with some polishing and a polish wheel uh, cleaned right up. We're going to go ahead and install that on the doors and the top of the dash. As you can tell the dashboard is removed again. Uh, there was some chipping in the paint. Wasn't happy with the way that was looking. So we've decided to go ahead and wrap it with uh, leather. We've got uh, the color we're using is what's called Orlando Orange Crush. It gives a nice kind of brightness to the interior. That's what the seats will be done in and all the kick panels that we're designing and building. Really excited about it. Um, the dash, um, we're going to have it embroidered with Austin Healey. And I should get that in the next week and then we'll install that and then show what that looks like. So for the dashboard I made a template and uh, contacted a company down in Boise 
called Science to Fit, and they embroidered the Austin Healy signature on, on the dash. And it turned out wonderful. It was just that extra touch that needed to be done for the car. And it looks great. Originally, we had painted it the color of the car, and I had chipped it when I installed some gauges. So it was either repaint it or reupholster it. And the reupholstery just came out wonderful. And I'm happy I went the extra mile and reupholstered it. For the seats, as you know, I bought the leather interior from the Leather Hide store. And I was going to send it off to, to have uh, someone who's done the seats in the past upholster them, but I uh, checked on Craigslist and found a guy who works out of his garage part-time. And he did all of the upholstery on the seats and actually installed it on the seats for me for $200 a bucket, which was a heck of a good deal. Did an incredible job. Of course, I supplied all the new foam and, and the leather. And he supplied, of course, his time and talent. And uh, it really worked out nice. We're really happy with that. The seats are installed uh, as they came uh, with the um, three quarter inch by inch and a half poplar wood that I used. And then uh, had to cut the carpet around that. But they installed very nice. Um, I think the car came out surprisingly good. I never know with his old projects what he's going to come up with. Especially when he, like, bends his own metal thing with that thingy jobber. <laughs> Final stages of the build are in progress. We've got the uh, hood, which is the last uh, body part to be done. And I know I'm kind of out of sync on that whole thing, but you know, for the last couple of years, I was trying to find a better hood, and uh, anything that was available was either way too much out of money and out of our budget, or it just wasn't in any better shape than the one I had. So I did buy some uh, sheet metal tools, and and I did buy some components for the hood out of England and married them all together and now I've matched all the gaps. Gaps are set. Uh, I did that with some fiberglass fill and uh, removed all the rust that I could out of the hood, patch panels. And uh, we're doing the final stages now, the skim coat, which will start sanding here real soon, and, and then go to paint. And then that is the final major project of the car. There's always a lot of little things to still do install the back bumpers and the front bumper if I decide to go that route and uh, then just uh, tweak little things that still need to be worked on. The project is uh, nearly 100% complete right now. There's just a few more things we need to do to buff the hood out, a little more gloss, but uh, this project has been four years and nine months long. And uh, I estimate probably close to 500 hours worth of labor. And uh, unfortunately, I tallied up the parts the other day and we're at about $13,000, including the purchase of the car uh, for a complete bug eye sprite, which is almost a a new car so really pleased with how it uh, turned out and can't wait to start going to car shows and enjoying it with my wife. <laughs>